You clicked on us. That was a wise choice because we've got a rather exceptional treat for you today. The film is 29 plus one from 2017. And it was the directorial debut of Kieran Pang. The film stars Chrissy Chow and Joyce Cheng. Welcome to HKB, I'm Leon. I'm Shaz. And today we're thrilled to be able to present a review on 29 plus one. The director, Kieran Pang, you may remember we covered a second feature film, which was Mama's Affair. And we so enjoyed that. And when we looked at her filmography, we discovered that one of the Blu-rays in our collection that we had and we hadn't watched was 29 plus one. And we came to this originally because it had Chrissy Chow in it. And we became Chrissy Chow fans after seeing her in, I think it was Heartbreak 100. Mm -hmm. I might be getting the title wrong there, it could be 100 Heartbreaks, but Heartbreak and 100 was definitely in the title. And it was a really good film with Chrissy Chow and Yi Kin Cheng. Then we discovered her in Yuppie Fantasia 3 as well. Mm -hmm. And we thought, we started to take notice then. And we thought, right, Chrissy Chow, we see some films of her in the budget bin, we're going to pick them up. And this was one of the ones we picked up and I don't know whether it was the cover or just lack of time, but we hadn't watched it until recently. And when we knew it was directed by Kieran Pang, we thought, yep, that was a great film, Mama's a Fur, let's get this one on. And what a good choice it was. So an overview of the film, it features two girls, um, both approaching their 30th birthdays and they become connected and then you just sort of see how their lives have turned out differently. Chrissy Chow, she's kind of the career driven mm. one of the two. You know, she's got fantastic good looks. She's got a great big circle of friends and she has a daily routine down to a T. <laughs> Is that a good thing though? You, you see it right at the beginning when she's breaking the fourth wall and talking to the audience. She's talking yeah. about mm. her day, you know, the alarm goes off at a certain time. She's got so many minutes to have breakfast, so many minutes to shower, so many minutes to put on makeup, so many minutes to get down to the bus stop, you know everything's regimental and yeah. and she's very focused on it and driven and the film starts mm -hmm. with her character mm -hmm. and her character is Christy Lamb and um, that's our, our main character at the start of the movie mm -hmm. but as mm -hmm. her life changes as she's nearing 30 you know she starts to ask herself questions am I making the right life choices is my life heading the right direction? Where do I want to go from here? Am I with the right partner? So there is a lot of questions for mm -hmm. her, as there is for all of us when we reach those monumental steps in life. So Christy Lam has a boyfriend, Seho, played by Benjamin Young. And it looks like maybe that relationship isn't perfect, or at least as perfect as she would like. Yes. It seems like there's some distance grown between them. But he travels a lot, so he's not always there for her. Mm -hmm. Their lives are pretty separate. They don't live together. There are a couple but they seem very disconnected. But I think that might come down to her being a sort of independent woman, not wanting to be dependent on others, or at least that's how she sees it. Yes, and I don't think she's got the utmost faith in him that he has everything that she requires out of a man, mm. a partner. Mm. Mm. 
Christy goes to her boss, Elaine, played by Elaine Jin. And even though she's just been given a promotion, she speaks to her about putting a job on hold for the time being. It's quite high stress. Mm -hmm. And um, she wants to explore other avenues in life. And her boss, Elaine, she's quite understanding and kind of says she'll hold the position for her. You know, she'll get somebody to take on her workload while she does what she needs to do. Yeah. Her life seems to be pretty much on the rocks, doesn't it? She, her landlord, who is played by Jan Lam, he actually sells the apartment that she's living in. So she has to move out pretty shortish. Mm. And he does have a nephew who has a place that she can rent for a couple of weeks. This is quite interesting, actually, because when she goes to this apartment, it's completely different to how she would live. It's filled with um, records and films, and it's decorated completely different. It's got an air of joy about it. Mm. And there's a VHS recorder with a VHS sticking out labeled Play Me, so she plays it. when we get introduced to Joyce Cheng's character, Wong Ting Lok. So Wong Ting Lok is, seems really bubbly actually on the little video she's made for Christy. fun and you just get a sense of you know yeah you can stay in my place for a few weeks yeah you know make it your own relax enjoy yourself and um then you know it focuses a little on her life and the fact that she's gone traveling um, leaving behind her boyfriend, which is the nephew, mm -hmm. played by Baby John Choi. And um, it's it's nice focusing on her character as well, because again, then you start realising, you know, from little snippets that are said that these two girls are the same age. And then as we were watching it, sort of drawing conclusions as to the different lives they've led. Yes, and their which birthday really happens nice. to be on exactly the same day. Which is a nice little touch too. And Baby John Choi, you may remember, was also in Yuppie Fantasia 3. So another nice little tie in there. And yes, that's it. Our main character's set up. And I have to say, Joyce Cheng is a revelation in this film. She's outstanding. And uh, her performance is so, so powerful. You really do feel touched. You know, yeah, there's there's points in the story that are quite emotional, but she brings a, a fun outlook on whatever's put in front of her, and I really really like that. And she also works at a record store, which is run by Lawrence Chang. And there's a, even a little in joke about how her boss was in the Yuppie Fantasia, making reference to how he looks like Lawrence Chang, which is funny because it is Lawrence Chang. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's a little tie off there as well because Christy had bought a poster of In the Mood from Love from the shop for her friend's 30th mm -hmm. birthday, which is a signed poster. Mm -hmm. So, you know, neat little references drawing on Hong Kong movie culture. I like that. It's just a nice little bit of flavor into the film. Yeah, and connects it to other things. Yeah, which is nice. We always like looking out for those. Mm. And uh, the drama in this is, is fantastic. The, the contrast between the two main leads 
Joyce and Chrissy. It's it's brilliant and although one works at a record shop and one has a high profile job, looking at their lives, who looks happier to you, you know? And they've both suffered like tragedies and losses in their lives, which is established throughout the film. Mm. And I really like this. The, the fact that this came from a play done by Kieran Pang like 12 years prior mm. and it was a one woman play a bit of a contemporary play that became a bit of a sensation in Hong Kong and then to turn that into this film yeah it's got some of that like uh, imagination in there where things happen that perhaps don't happen quite as you're watching them you know you've got to use your imagination a bit and go with mm. it and I like that, you know, it's a little bit abstract in places and yeah, it's, yeah. it's fantastic. We know we've got shooting locations of Hong Kong and Paris in this and it looks nice. This film's extremely well polished. Yeah, and I felt like it was nicely tied together. To give credibility to how good this film has been directed, Kieran Pang got the Best New Director Award at the 37th Hong Kong Film Awards. And after you've watched this, you can quite mm. clearly see why. Mm. We love Mama's Affair, but I think this is a superior film. And perhaps that's mm. because it's such a close project to our heart. Obviously took up a large part of her life. Yeah, yeah. And I guess if she'd worked on it for so long as a stage show, mm. you're going to have more of a connection to the story and more of a feel of how you want it to be seen, maybe? Yes, and you really see that mm. all up mm. there on the screen. A nice little touch throughout the film with Joyce Chang's character is she's a massive Leslie Chung fan. As as are we. <laughs> as are we. <laughs> and um she made references throughout the film to Sunset in Paris. Um, and we've not really heard of this, had we? So no. we were trying to find what it was. Like, is it um, another film that we'd somehow missed? But um, we couldn't find very much, but right. it looks like it was um, a music video or some sort of music special. Will you remember me? You're calling something. Yeah, I think it was a musical special from what we can ascertain. It did not show up on the film databases mm -hmm. because it isn't a film, but it looks like he'd done a special of music videos and Maggie Chung was in them too. And was there somebody else in it? Besides Maggie Chung? I think there was. I want to was say it, it was Ch Sherry Chung. Yeah, I, think it was, I might be wrong. Yeah, I think it was Sherry Chung as well. And uh, they look really Good. You can find them on YouTube and we might sit down and watch that at some point, even though we couldn't find a version with English subtitles, we'll, we'll still just give it a whirl. Yeah. And yeah, again, a nice little thing that we didn't know about that we discovered yeah. through this film. Yeah. So, you know, opening up more doors again and we really like this. Any last words before we go and score this one, Chaz? Well, there was a song um, called Fake a Smile and that was actually sung by Joyce Chang for the film. Yes, it was quite a good song. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention before we go that Eric Cott turned up in this as a taxi driver. He was Christie's taxi driver, even though dad didn't want her taking the taxi and she was saying that she was taking the bus and yeah the supporting cast in this too is yeah, excellent really but good, we're, yeah. we're not going to give you a rundown of everybody in it we think this is a very high recommendation for us we think this film is superb so this is the copy that we watched it's released by panorama and as you can see from the top here that it, it won several awards um well, why you know why would it not it's amazing Yes, and loads of nominations too. The Blu-ray was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, this is a more recent film, being 2017, so you would expect it to be good. But I did notice the subtitles were pretty exceptional in this one. Yeah. Which, you know, yeah. matters a lot to a lot of people out there. Quality of it was very good. There wasn't much in the way of extras. I, well, no, that's not true. Compared to some of the others, it did have some extras yes. on it. Yes, 
but I tend to forget when they're not subtitled in English. Yeah, but, yeah. But it's good, and um, as you can see on the cover as well, we didn't mention there's a picture of the Eiffel Tower made out by lots of different Polaroids. You'll see that in the film. I really like that as well. Yeah. Little things like that I really, really love. Really striking sort of imagery. And and this Eiffel Tower is a bit of a feature. I noticed in the taxi driver's cab at one point, he had a little Eiffel Tower key ring, which we actually were sent with this Blu-ray. So, yeah, you know, if yeah. you order it, you might get one too. So that's really, really cool plus. So yeah, we highly recommend this and it's not too expensive. We'll put purchase things up for you. Right, well, I'm scoring 29 plus one, nine out of 10. I absolutely loved it. And it's a 9.5 out of 10 for me. Absolutely fantastic and near perfect film. We hope you've enjoyed watching this review. We thoroughly enjoyed watching it and reviewing it for you. Right, well, we look forward to seeing you next time. Adios amigos.